Hello. <laughs> Had to wait for the signal. I didn't know if I was on. I hear the claps and stuff. But uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the LDM show. And uh, I'm glad you came back and to see another episode of me talking crap. But for you guys that don't know who I am, my name is Charles Aloma, and this is the LDM show. So I'm going to go on here on the LDM uh, show because I got to do some sharing. Sharing is caring. So, but I'm, I'm glad you guys are, are watching right now. We got a couple of good stories we want to talk about. I know uh, topics today will be about how a person got away with murdering their, their kid, a uh, newborn, buried uh, and everything. We're going to be talking about that. I'm going to talk about if you think woman empowerment, <coughs> excuse me, Woman empowerment is going a little too far. I want to talk a little bit about that as well. And then I want to talk about uh, Christmas saving uh, gifts, things you can do to uh, save some money. And uh, what else? There was another one I was going to talk about. Boom, 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 boom. But I think that's probably pretty much it and a couple other stuff that we are uh, depending on the uh, live audience or what they say but uh oh I don't even think she set up the uh, the pictures for the people so but anyway these are what we're going to talk about I'm, I'm glad uh, you guys came I'm just doing a real quick uh, Facebook uh, watch on my uh, phone to see if I can do anything about it. Wow, I don't know which one is live now. Um, oh, <laughs> it popped up like three of them live. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to pick the first one, right? I guess so. But that's how you do. You share your live footage, and I'm hoping this is the live footage. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's go straight to a story. Oops. Yep, that must be it. But anyway. <laughs> We gotta invite, invite, invite. But anyway, let's go straight to the uh, one story that um that I wanted to talk about real quick, which is a lady at the name of uh, Brooke Skylar at 17 years old. This was this happened about just about 17, 18. Sorry, this happened two years ago. She went to her doctor. Huh? Sorry, I had an itch in, in, in the side. Is this the damn microphone belt is pinching my side and I, I, I'm getting molested in the back right here, you know, by the but anyway. Uh at 17 to 18 years old, she went to her gynecologist, whatever, the, the little uh yeah, she went and told her that she buried her child because she she was going to know that she gave birth. They Somehow they know when they go on in there and they put their whole hands in there and they be all examining what all the way up to their elbows and scratching your heart from, your, from the middle. You know, they, they, uh, they all know if you had a, a baby or not. It was a little exaggeration with the elbow stuff. Well, I don't know. Some people, if you watch some of these... Uh, these um, X-rated movies, they be putting everything up up in there, so it can it can happen. But anyway, um, she she told her doctor that she buried her child and burned her a little, so they took her to jail. It wasn't until last week that they found her innocent. Innocent. Check that out innocent. The whole news, the media, the people, uh, social media, the news, they were like, oh my God, I can't believe she killed a kid and she got away with it, blah, blah, blah. I thought that was kind of crazy, so I wanted to look more into the case and find out what happened. And uh, what turned out to be, she was innocent. The baby was stillborn. She did not tell anybody she was pregnant, first of all. 
She didn't want to tell nobody that she was pregnant. So when she did finally give birth, it was a secret. So she uh, basically, it was the baby was stillborn. She didn't know what to do. She panicked uh, and buried the baby. So in her state of mind, she wasn't really right at that moment because everything that happened so quick. But she did get charged with uh, messing around with a corpse. That's against the law. You can't do stuff like that, even though it's a corpse or not. So she's going to wind up doing six months. But her name was, is Brooke Skylog Richards. Uh, um, she's 20 years old now. Was, she was acquitted of murder, manslaughter, and child endangerment last Thursday. Check that out. Good lawyer. If the glove don't fit, <laughs> you got to quit. But uh, she was convicted of gross abuse of a corpse which that is against the law, but they only gave her uh, six months um, for burying her child in 2017. It's normally, this is where I, if I'm not, I'm not from that state, but PA and, and uh, New York messing around with a corpse is six months to a year. So I'm like, why they only gave her the minimum? You know? Well, she was young and everything. Okay, that's probably why they gave her the minimum. I don't know. But anyway, the jury went lunchtime to check out on the verdict, came back real quick, like two to three hours. So they basically was just like, you know what, I'm waiting for my food. I already know what I'm going to say. I'm just going to wait for my food. Hey, we get free food for being, uh, you know, in court. So they ate their lunch. They, you know, they slept probably for a good half an hour, and they came back. <laughs> and they came back. That's how quick the verdict was, you know. And then she... Her and her parents broke down when they heard the, um, the, the actual verdict. Yeah, the actual uh, verdict that she was innocent. So she was 18. Like I said, she was 18 when this happened. She gave birth. It was a still baby. So um, stillborn baby. And it was, a, it was a little girl. So, you know, just to dive down the uh, violins a little bit, you know, in case you're watching, you know. It was a little girl. It was in May 2017 when her family went upstairs to the bathroom. Um, and she told about her pregnancy. She was pregnant. And she said that she buried him, uh, buried the baby in the yard. So that was kind of crazy. She uh, confessed to it two months later. So does that really deserve the minimum? That's what I'm trying to say. I could see if it happened that moment. And then later on, like a week or so, you, you know, you feel guilty. You didn't know what to do. You, you let it out. But two months later, you were trying to cover it up. And you didn't say nothing until you got to the doctors. So that's a little bit, uh, you know what I'm saying, a little funny. Yeah. So the doctor is the one that called the police. Because she knew she gave birth by feeling her up. And then she, she confessed. So, you know, uh, they, they actually put her in jail. This is why she got minimum time. Be without investigating, they charged her with murder before the autopsy was out. So this is the reason why she pretty much. So for all the people that are screaming and yelling, oh, she's a white girl. That's why she got away with it. No. They charged her for a crime that wasn't uh, um, stable for that situation. You cannot charge somebody for robbery, uh, robbing your house when they took your car. You understand what I'm trying to say? Is that understandable? That's why. They charged her for manslaughter and murder on her kid because she buried them without the autopsy being in. They could have said that she was a person of interest of the uh, corpse of the baby Jane Doe, because I don't think they knew her name, then the case would have probably been a little bit more than six months. This is what I'm trying to say, what happened. So before you watch the news and you start screaming and yelling, she did get away with it. She got away with murder, or not get away, but the corpse showed that she did not kill her. The baby was stillborn. 
Yeah, the baby was technically dead when she before she buried her soul. This is the reason why it happened. But my thing is, too much stuff is going on. Too much kids, too much things dying. Um, so, and then they claim that she put him on fire and the baby wasn't on fire or nothing like that. So these are the little things that, by law, they screwed up a little. So, uh, yeah, Kathy, Catherine, it, it is sad when it, it is a baby. And it was a newborn baby, so a little baby girl. So uh, maybe it wasn't her time to come. And, and then, the, I don't know, I, I'm a, you, you probably get a little upset what I'm going to say now, but I think of the bright side. I'm glad that she wasn't born to a mother that only cared about herself. Because this is the reason why she buried her, because she said she wanted to keep the good girl act. Everybody thought she was a good girl, and, and she winded up getting pregnant, so she made a mistake. So she wanted to keep that act going on. So if she would have not been stillborn, she would have probably been going through some problems with the mother because the mother didn't really want the baby. So in a way, I think it is a blessing. I don't know. You know? It depends on how you look at blessings. So uh, it is a sad moment, and I'm, I'm glad that is taken care of. But we're going to keep uh, continue going, and we're going to talk a little bit about Nick Cannon. Oh, no, I, I forgot his name. Sorry about that. Nick Cannon and Eminem's battle fight. Battle royal, whatever you want to call it, off the dome battle. Nick Cannon has uh, offered a battle to Eminem. Everybody was going crazy again without knowing the whole story. They're going crazy. Why? Nick Cannon, of course, you got the Wild and Out show. You think you know how to battle people. People don't know that Nick Cannon was a person that used to battle back in the days with Big E and, uh, and all of these guys, you know, back in the days when they did battle rapping. So he was one of them. So and that, that's, this is the reason why his show is basically about battle, you know, off the dome and stuff like that. So, but story goes that Eminem, I think, used to go out with Mar Mariah Carey back in the days or something like that. I'm, I'm not too sure because in his new, yeah, and in his new song, he s throws little punts at Mariah and Nick Cannon. But they're saying that he did it after Nick Cannon said something about him. Nick Cannon denied saying anything about him before that. He just said, watch your mouth and keep my wife's name out of your mouth. So he said, which is a typical husband back in those days. But now he's broken up with her and then the whole feud is coming right back up again. I'm thinking Nick Cannon or Eminem called him and said, hey, Eminem said, people know who I am, but I haven't been doing nothing lately. Want to start something? <laughs> right? Because why would this feud come out of the blue? Eminem have not clapped back since the song. But Eminem has other problems too because even Fat Joe is uh, arguing with him now because of uh, li the lyrics in the song. When Fat Joe was part of the song, he didn't want to do it. It was a whole thing. Um, I'm going to be probably talking about it because I want to read a little bit more about it before I even shoot. But now he has Fat Joe on him uh, and Nick Cannon. And then shout out to LL Cool J who put on his tweet to, to Nick Cannon and said, thanks for the shout outs, I guess, because Nick Cannon did a whole hour interview and he shot out all these people that were good rappers. And then when they said Eminem, he said he was a good rapper in the beginning. But I guess as they were speaking about, oh, did you hear the lyrics, Nick Cannon clapped back and said, you think you are? Let's do this. I would love to see a rap battle again of the real rappers and the stars to come out. But like Nick Cannon said, he did have a point because I did see it a lot. I do see it a lot still. A lot of the rappers that come into my show and or to other shows that I was a part of, and they had to do what they call a, a cypher. They, had a, they, had, they just put music and you, you go off the dome 
there was not off the dome. Those were lyrics that they knew they wrote like long time ago, or they have it on their phone, and you see them rapping and looking at their phone, and re that's not off the dome. So that's what Nick Cannon was saying, that you guys remember your lines, and y'all just put it into every other song, to any song that pops up. Y'all just go a little bit with the beat, but it's the same lines. So that's why he said a lot of the rappers cannot go off the dome. So I would love to see that battle. I would love to see that battle. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Some people say he don't have nothing on Eminem because you're, lo you're listening to Eminem's songs. Have Eminem really did battle rap? I don't know. If you guys know if Eminem did battle raps, let me know because I'm not. School me. Yeah, yeah. School me, boy. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> but I, I don't think so. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you don't judge Eminem by his music because, yes, he was smack Nick Cannon in the face a couple times with his music that he had. Judge him by his battle rap uh, status. His battle rap status. Have he ever did it? And I'm not talking about in his sh that movie that he did, that his first movie that he was battle rapping. And I'm not talking about that because that, those he are. Did that. Maybe he did. No, those are all lyrics. That's what I'm saying. I think he was one at, at one time. But hey. But Eminem has been a little bit quiet since. But Nick Cannon poked twice. He poked on his Instagram and he poked on the interview. Eminem is not going to stay quiet too long. So I definitely want to see this rap battle going on, you know. And, or any battle against Nick Cannon because he didn't offer anyone that thinks they know how to battle. And he said if he wins or lose, but at least he'll, you know, fight with, you know. And Nick Cannon does. He does good on his show. And sometimes you can see on his show he pulls back because he doesn't want to bypass the, the celebrity that's on his show. You know what I'm saying? And then there's sometimes you can tell that he's trying his best and he can't make it. So he's a humble guy. Uh, I'm not saying I'm for him. I'm not saying I'm for Eminem. I'm just for the great battle of uh, Off the Dome. That's what I'm for. Uh... Are we ready for a little break here before we go on? I don't know. Because she was all into the conversation of uh, the rap battle going on. She's trying to get her lyrics looking at her phone. But it, it, it's a something that's going on out there as with the rappers. A lot of the people say, oh, he's a, he's a hardcore rapper. He, oh, man, his lyrics are good. My lyrics can be great, too, if I'm sitting there and writing and changing the words and writing it. You know what I'm saying? So it could be good. But when you throw something in someone's face and they have to rap about it, I don't know if they're good or not. That's the whole point. The whole point is, are you good if they throw something in your face? So, hey, we're going to take a short break. When I come back, I want to talk a little bit about uh, saving some money, and then I want to get to a real good conversation about is woman empowerment going a little too far? And the reason why, I'll tell you shortly. We'll be right back. armies clash in a struggle for total domination the scales can be tipped by one man who has the courage to confront his fate 
and make a choice that will decide the fate of the world. put a lot of smoke in today. Wow. But anyway, we expecting a real superhero? I don't think so. The real life superheroes are the ones that are helping out in their community today. And the LVM show will be there to bring you the events and stories to light. Do you know a real superhero? Let us know. But for now, follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. Also visit our websites for photos, videos, and updates. But until the meantime, hey, I gotta be out of here. Hey everybody, I'm Will D. I am Javier Luis. I'm Alex Polanco. I'm Apolonia Cruz. And I'm Kelly Caboo. I'm Charlie Fall. I am Emmanuel Anzule. Do you know one in four women will experience domestic violence during their lifetime? And domestic violence and abuse can happen to anyone. Regardless of gender, race, or other factors. Two out of three homicide cases are females who were killed by a family member or intimate partner. As domestic violence victims, they face high rates of depression, sleep disturbances, anxiety, flashbacks, and other emotional distresses. And without help, witnesses of domestic violence are more vulnerable to become abusers themselves. Thus continuing the cycle of violence in the next generation. Hello, I'm Charles Aloma. Join the LDM Network in a safe horizon and take a step into changing these facts. So if you are or know someone that is being abused, please call the City Domestic Hotline at one 800 621 so that is 1-800-621-HOPE. Speak up, speak out, and make a difference. And just know that you don't have to deal with this alone. There is help. Hello and welcome back to the LDM show. Uh, before the break, we were talking about the uh, battle of Eminem and uh, Nick Cannon. So, Eminem or Nick Cannon, if you ever watch this show and you do a battle, let me know. I want to see this. <laughs> Be exclusive. No, um, but uh, who do you think will win, Nick Cannon or, or, or Eminem? But again, do not vote due to the fact of their music. Vote to the fact of who used to be better off the dome battle rapper. Though that's what how you have to have to uh do it. You know? Because off the dome. Hello Apranodia Cruz. How we doing? Olas, olas. Fabian, how's it going? Clapping on all these people. But anyway, Oh, Tonya, Tonya Barrella, it was on, or, or is on, the chef of all chefs. 
got to check her out, man. She made some good cookies. It, it's almost about that time, right? Oh, she didn't do it this year. She didn't do it this year. Uh, yeah, that's right. Because normally we, we, we're spending a little bit of the uh, before Thanksgiving with her. Yeah. yeah, she didn't do it this year. But uh, shout outs to her. She's, I've seen that she posted up some uh, videos with her new food that she, she's coming out, she came out with. So um, that just tells me she's back. Fabian, LDM show down. <laughs> uh, shout outs to Fabian as well. Uh, check his music out. Got a new, another song. But since you guys are listening, we were talking about saving money uh, for Christmas and type of gifts you can give out for Christmas. First of all, I'm against anything that government tells me I got to pay for and because it puts the things in the people's head that they have to get a gift for those days. Um, but, oh, I found a, a, a way how you can really save money like with anniversaries or weddings and stuff like that. You know how? You get engaged or you're getting married on the leap year. Boom. For four years, you don't have to get that person a gift. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wouldn't that save you some money? For four years, you, you don't have to get don't, don't boo me. Don't boo me. For four years. Honey, next year's our anniversary. No, it ain't. In another four years, come and, come and hit me up when there's another four years, you know? And with the race that is going, some people don't even stay together that long. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I'm just saying, you don't get it. You get engaged, you know, or you, you're, you meet a girl. On the leap year, that day, you ask her to be your girl. So it's official that that day, day is your anniversary. If you're wedding, wedding anniversary, the first day you kiss, kiss, that's, that's whatever anniversary. But you won't celebrate it to another four years. Apollonia <laughs> said recycle an old gift. <laughs> what? Apollonia said recycle an old gift. <laughs> recycle an old gift. That's another way. That's another way to save some money. Recycle an old gift. Uh, yeah, which, which is true. But there are ways to... Uh, there's ways to uh, save money and still be in good grace with... Your, your mate, or your family, your friends, it doesn't really uh, matter. The one thing you definitely, definitely need to do is make, make sure you know the per person. No matter what gift you give that person, make sure you know, know that person. Hey, if that person loves eagles, and you go to the dollar store and get a nice eagle that they never knew, and now here I come with raccoons or something like that, they're going to be like, oh, okay, but now you come with a dollar eagle. You know how happy that person is going to be? Because you knew that person. You knew what that person liked. So that's the best way to make sure your gift is a lastable gift. Um, Mate-wise. Mate-wise, I don't know. I'm not really a celebrator of government holidays. I, I'll tell you that much. Especially not holidays like this because... It really gets to me, um, reasons beyond this conversation. But uh, getting gifts, it has to be a science to it, I guess, right? You just have to know the person, basically, and get the gift that fits that person. Because I'm telling you, don't come and give me a gift and talking about, this is a gift I was thinking about you, and then I have to throw it away and say, you never thought about me because I don't like that stuff. So remember that. I, I spoke about that last time. Hi, Miss Rosemary. I'm glad you are back. We had a little scare. My little Coquito Master had a little scare, so, you know, so we were holding our breath for a while. So I'm glad that she's okay now. And uh, hello, Anna Santana is our. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it's bad day, so you got to put that little oof in it. Santana, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, Rosemary. You know, you got to put that little uh, Spanish thing when it comes to the Spanish. And then when it comes to the, like, if you have a Spanish name, American name, name Rosemary, how you doing? Hey, Bill, Bill. You seen the difference? Like, like Bill, are you, are you doing pretty good? <laughs> I, 
Ana, go go on. You know, you you say what what the the, the Spanish thing. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, she said hi, sweetie. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank everyone for the prayers and all that stuff that they uh, send out. You know, uh, but uh, saving gifts. Hey, there goes a gift idea. Contact Rosemary uh, Cologne and, and get a coquito. <laughs> Hook it up. Put a little uh, bow on it. Put a little nice box with a coquito. And guess what? That pr that present is good for both of y'all. Could you get her drunk and you're good to go? You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm just thinking what guys are thinking right now. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, there are gifts. I think the best gift is not something you give the person as a as a how you call it as a solid material thing but more of a memory thing. Take them out somewhere for that one moment. Uh, yeah, everything is packed, but that's the thing. Surprise them by doing something. Or do something in the house. For you guys that don't really do nothing in the house too much, or do something with the, uh, uh, with the maid or something, do something like maybe cook or something. I don't know. Like a nice design or something. Or, or you know what's the best thing? Hook up the bedroom or the house when she leaves. New bed sheets, new covers that they, she didn't even know you were going to have. Change the room around, stuff like that, you know? Or, or for y'all people that really uh, cold hearted, you do some changes. When she come home, there's nothing in the house. <laughs> there it goes, surprise. No, but um, nice things like that, like uh, something new in the house. Like I said, I'm torn between two lives. My, my, my wife is more of a want to celebrate every damn government um, issue thing that goes on. And I'm like, heck no. So for Christmas, I have to bend a little and I have to do something because we have a child. So. And FYI, it's close to my wife's birthday. See, and, and that's another thing. If you have a birthday that is together with a, ho a government holiday, which one trumps? No, the birthday trumps the holiday because the holidays, I don't, I don't really care. It's a government holiday. It's, they all screwed it up anyway. They all got the wrong dates and stuff and stuff like that. Christmas, I, I don't even think, think Christmas was on the 35th. Do we really know Christmas was on the 25th? No, 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 no. Okay. They all screwed up, screwed up anyway. So I can, I can, I can be like, mira, mira, the 25th lands on a Wednesday. I celebrate it on a Friday. <laughs> I got work to do. <laughs> I'll celebrate it on a Friday. But, uh, yeah, there are gifts. Hey, hey, Frankie, Frankie Rizzo is on the house. But uh, you getting gifts that meant just for you and the mate. Like I know a lot of people love to go out to family and friends' house and stuff like that. But you can go the next day or a little later on in the day. Why don't you take that one moment or a couple hours just for you and that person? You know what I'm saying? Park the car in the highway. Look at the sun. Look at the, I mean, the stars. I mean, I said the sun and the stars. <laughs> That's not going to work. <laughs> but look at the stars. Do something. Uh, Anna said, best gift is your friendship and time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see. Uh, now I see that. Best, Anna said, best gift is your friendship and time. And that is the perfect thing that I'm speaking about. Sometimes when you have uh, time that you don't have time to give, when you do give that time on that special day, the moment and the memories and the awe, they, they go up 10, 10 knocks, you know? Because if you, if you give something to your wife, I'm talking, about, I'm talking to the guys now, if you give something to your wife, she's probably like, ah, uh, that's nice. But if you give her your time that she knows that it was like, oh my God, he knocked everything down just to give me that, now that little high voice ah, goes up, you know what I'm saying? She's, the tears come out and stuff like that. But don't do it because you just want that. Do it because it comes out of love. Because I, I don't know about you guys, but these women know when you're doing something out of love or when you're just doing something to shut her up. <laughs> Believe me. They're going to still take the gift. Don't, don't get me wrong. They'll still take the gifts. But they know when it's given by love or just given to just to give the gift. You don't want that because they'll hold that against you. They'll hold that against you a couple of times. They'll turn around and be like, uh, uh, let me write this down. Okay, what are you? Okay, I write that one down too. You know? They got that memory up there. 
and then they'll give you a gift that you don't want. So always make sure. Uh, oh, Miss Passar, hello. Check her out. Miss Passar is online too. Frank Abraham. So yeah, guys. Like I said, any 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 gifts that you guys didn't pay a lot. You don't have to say the gift, you know, because then if somebody's watching, they'll be like, oh, so she, she only paid $2 for my gift? You know, I'm not saying that. But a gift that you didn't spend so much, but you got a big impact about? You ever had that? Well, all the parents have it with your kids because your kids draw you something or write you something. That's the best gift. You know what I'm saying? When they made you something. They, do they ever make houses anymore with macaronis? I, no, I guess not because people be like, ah. Uh -uh. I'm too poor. I ain't making no house out of macaronis. If I do, we're going to cook that later on. <laughs> but uh, I remember, the, you know, like I used to make gifts, like your little handprint, and then you make the little uh, turkey, and then you, you know, draw. Little things like that from a kid was great. Now, as a teenager, if you can do something like that for your parents, I think it's even better than you when you were a little baby. Because they respected it when you were a little baby, you know? But as a teenager, I don't even know these. The only gifts that a teenager gives you is the receipt of something that they wanted from the store. <laughs> it's the only thing a teenager is going to give you, you know? I don't see that many uh, kids giving parents gifts like that. Uh, and it's a shame. We're not going to be around too long. So if any of y'all teenagers are watching this video... Get something for your parents, but don't get a, nothing for your parents on Christmas and stuff like that. Big, I'm talking about, don't, not a big gift. Do like we do. Me and my wife, we have uh, for the heck of it days. You know, I'll just wind up a gift. What was that for? Oh, that's for the heck of it day. You know what I'm saying? If you do that to your parents, that shows how much you really love the person. Because the parents would not expect it. You know what I'm saying? Like Mother's Day and all that, all parents be like, oh, Jamie Mo, he'll come. Give me my present and then he's going to be about to leave. They expect that. Change their, their thoughts. Change their minds. You change their hearts. So uh, do something for Christmas because the Christmas feeling is going down. So let's try to bring that Christmas feeling back up. I don't know. My house, Christmas for me, is really not good. So it's not, I'm saying being around my wife and my kids is always great and the Christmas, but it's not the same, same. Like there's something missing in, in Christmas, uh, the family impact and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I love every moment, every quiet moment that we have when my son is asleep. Because <laughs> when he's awake, it's, it's crazy. The question, now he's in the question stage, they're letting us know what's going on with him stage. And like, I don't need to know you had something in your penis. And stuff like that. I don't care. Just clean it. Goodness gracious. <laughs> but the kids will be kids. Hey, I got to put them on blast too. <laughs> but, he, you know, it's always like that. But uh, I want to get to the, you know, that's the, the, the saving the money on Christmas. Saving the package. Re-giving package. Uh, I'll give the same package you gave me last year if I didn't like it. So see how you like it. <laughs> And if you guys are wondering, uh, because I was just wondering myself, like, I'm looking at you dead on, and then I'm looking this way. Because we have two sets of cameras for two stations, so I have to give these people a good view, and you guys a good view sometimes. So uh, that's the reason why I'm going back and forth. But anyway, we're going to jump subjects. Since there's people on, I think this subject is going to be pretty good. I think we have a couple of females on watching. So instead of taking the commercial break, we have a few minutes left, about 20, minutes. Oh, so we got a good 20 minutes, 20 to 15 minutes, so that's good. So I want to uh, jump into this conversation right now. Is in woman empowerment going a little too far? That's the question I have. And you guys can answer that question below, but now I'm going to throw some what, what we call knowledge. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, and the reason why I say that is because the, I think it was a couple months ago, 
uh, about a month or so ago, I did a story about how a girl wanted to leave Girl Scouts to join Boy Scouts. I was against it, not because she's a girl. Uh, well, yeah, basically, because it's called Girl Scout and Boy Scout. That's why I was against it. Like, if you're a girl, why would you want to come into the Boy Scout, but you're not a butch, you're not a dyke, you're not nothing like that. You're a straight-up girl. You know what I'm saying? She says she's a little bit a tomboy, but she loves boys. So right there and then, I would be like, hold up. You can't go into a place where there's all boys. Uh-uh. I guess because she was young. But imagine a teenager doing that. Woo, no. You be on, uh, on uh, Murray talking about who's the daddy. I don't know. You can't do that. But anyway, I, they granted her her wish, which I think that was kind of dumb. And it's because... They were like, oh, why you don't want no girl here? This is crazy. Uh, when they were going to court, they were actually saying, this is crazy that you don't want any girls to be in, uh, in a club or something where there's all boys. There shouldn't be a club with all boys. First of all, it was called Boy Scouts. That's why they had Boy Scouts and they had Girl Scouts. Plain and simple. Stay your lane. The woman empowerment does not have to go to a different lane to show that you have a woman empowerment. That's going a little too far. But here's the catch. Now, she went to Boy Scouts. A couple months later, now she's trying to make her own little group of girls to be in Boy Scouts. Let me say that for the persons that didn't hear that correctly or didn't understand this. She went from Girl Scouts Two Boy Scouts, now she's trying to bring, because the reason why she did that, because they were all boys, and, and you shouldn't be just boys, 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 but now you, bring, you want to bring a bunch of girls to the Boy Scouts to have a little girl group. Does that make any damn sense? You should have stood at Girl Scouts. That's a no. That's, that, that's so to it that stop the bull crapping. You should have stood at Girl Scouts if you want to be with all these bunch of girls doing all this stuff. Now, there's a point that one person made on a comment said, it's because Boy Scouts have more um, things, like more survival stuff out in the woods, and they teach a little bit more. Well, hello, if you know that's the problem with Girl Scouts, then take that little thing and bring it into the Girl Scouts. That's all to it. Yeah, that's probably why. But if you're complaining that the Boy Scouts can teach you how to use a knife in the woods, then teach the Girl Scouts how to use a knife in the woods. Plain and simple, you see? I'll send you my bill later. Any other questions? I'm just saying. If I'm not right, then let me know. But I think if you know what the problem is, then why you don't look for a solution? The solution was not to have a girl go into Boy Scouts, and now that girl wants to do a little group because there's all these boys. It's called Boy Scouts for a reason. That means there are all boys in there. So I think the woman empowerment is going a little too, too far. That's, that's why won the case. They bring woman empowerment up. And that's what made her win the case for her to go to Boy Scouts. Because they didn't want to hear. When, listen, that's like we go to a restaurant and a white person will walk in and say, can I have that table? No problem. I come in. Can I have that table? Oh, wait, let me see if I can. Oh, why I can't have that table? Oh, I, now I'm starting to yell. But since I'm a Puerto Rican or a black person, whoever is yelling, they don't want to hear you no more. They be like, oh, no, okay, cool. And they give you that table. That's basically what she's did. They were saying, no, no, no. And then she said, well, woman empowerment. We should shop. We should do this. We oh, wait, wait. We don't want to hear this woman empowerment. We don't want to bring this into our, uh, our town. I don't want to seem like I'm, I'm pushing women's away. They gave her to her. So that's what I'm saying. It's going a little too far. Put your man panties on. And say no sometimes. That's all I'm saying. The judges out here need to say no when it's no. Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. 
It's been like that for more many, many years. Now, where does that fit in if you are gay? When we hit that bridge, we'll find out. But we haven't hit it. If you're straight female, you go to female. If you're straight male, you go to the males. Boy scouts, girl scouts. Boy bathroom, girls bathroom. See how that worked? That's exactly how it should have been. But since the government gave it to her, now everything is going out. It's going crazy. Am I right or am I wrong? I know I have a point. See, and this coming from a woman in the engineer section saying I have a point. Well, you just have to keep it to yourself. No, I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm saying it out there, out there, and loud. Boy Scouts stay with the boys. Girl Scouts stay well, with the girls. If it's, if it's like that, cut Boy Scouts off completely. Cut Girl Scouts off and just call them Scouts. Co-ed. Co-ed Scouts. That's it. Cut them completely off. Stop selling your high-priced um, cookies, and <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to, the cookies had nothing to do with it. I just wanted to throw it out there, because I love those, they taste good. I'm a cookie person, but damn, I'm not spending that much money on no box. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll give you the donation before I buy the box. <laughs> but uh, I think, and that comes to the point, I don't know how much, uh, minutes I got, which I'm going to be t- speaking about on our show, on my uh, podcast called Speak Out. Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of what I'm saying. On my podcast called Speak Out later on, I think I'm having uh, uh, Shirley Phillips from um, the comment section. I think she's going to probably join me as well. We're not sure. We're just getting everything together. But are the black and brown females their own destroyer of their lives. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why uh, the the hornet, uh, (laughs) I forgot his name, Black, Pop the Brown Hornet, Hornet put up a video, which I'm going to be speaking about. We had the video tuned in, but then the computer, we had to do something, we forgot to put it back. But anyway, I'll put it, uh, you guys will see it, you won't. <laughs> but uh, the video states, you know, you hear the guy speaking about how women degrade or are pissed off about stuff, but they their own reason. Why? It's just like I go for a job, let's say, and the guy says, "Hey, call in, you know, within these couple of days to find out if you got the job or not." I don't call in until like a week two later. I'm sorry, we get the job. Ah, y'all get the job because I'm a black person or I'm a Puerto Rican, you know, whatever. You, no, it didn't have nothing to do with that. You destroyed your own self. If you would have called in, maybe you would have got the job. Like you would have called in the next day and said, hey, um, I'm just checking to see if, if they found out. No? Okay, I'll check tomorrow. And you kept on pursuing it, you probably would have got it. But you waited two weeks, Nick. Nobody going to wait for you. It's the same thing with the females. Constantly saying, I never get a good man. Ah, I'll never get a good man. All these mans are no good. First of all, you didn't date every single man. All right? Second of all, you keep taking the same mans from the same section. If you're in the fruit and you're grabbing the one apple, no good. You grab the second apple from that same side, no good. A third apple, no good. Wouldn't that tell you to go to the other side now? Let me jump to this side and find out if there's a good apple. Oh, here it goes. We got a good apple. That's why you're not finding good men because you're constantly going to the same corners or the same clubs or the same places to find a no good man. Then you complain when good men take them or white men take the uh, black girls or when the black guys take a white man, a white woman. Um, This whole video explains that to a T, that this video I thought would get so much women to be complaining, and it was the opposite. The women were agreeing that a lot of the women are their own destruction. There's a lot of 
single mothers out there, mothers raising their kids without the fathers. Why is that? What I always said is because the mothers are constantly looking for these fathers that never took care of their kids in the first place. How many kids you got? Three. Where are they? I don't know. They're somewhere around there. They're, they're. Oh, okay, cool. I'm going to give you the fourth one. So ain't that you destroying your own life already? I'm just saying. I know a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people would, would not like the subject. I'm for it. Just remember, I love to debate. So if you know how to debate, come to me and we debate this. But intelligent, because but I said that that's not going to get you no correct debates. Are you not dating the same type of person all the time and then saying, because I heard it many times on the bus, these black mans ain't, they ain't crap. They don't do this. They don't do that. But I'm like, if I look at your portfolio, you probably have the same type of men. You understand know what I'm saying? So those men are the ones destroying. You are the ones picking them. So you're picking someone that's destroying your life anyway. So don't blame the men's, and they're not all men's because you're not looking at the right sections. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing with men. Oh, all these women, all oh, they want me for money. Well, because you keep going towards the gold digger corner. Go to the ones that already have and already doing and will raise you up to push you to do more. Then you say, that's why you hear some people say, I finally found the right one. No, you didn't finally found the right one, which is okay to say, but you mean you finally moved to the other side of the rotten apples. You understand what I mean? Does this make any sense? You have to. Oh, I got a question from a person that doesn't have a mic in the background, which is the engineer. But uh, maybe she'll get a mic that's on and then she can ask the question. But, like I said, if you are constantly getting someone, and a lot of people have that want to change the guy or the guy want to change this girl mentality. No. You can't do that. You know what I'm saying? You can't uh, try to change someone that's been doing it for many, many years if they don't want to change themselves. You know what I'm saying? But, oh, you got a question? Yes, I have a question. I don't hear you. You want to turn the hand mic thing on? Let's see. Hello. I don't hear you. Okay. Let's see. Hello, hello, hello. Let me see. Put it on again. Hello. Well, they hear you, but they hear you low. But anyway, go ahead. Ask the question. I'll answer it out here, too. Go ahead. Okay. So the question is, you say find a better woman, right? But then guys get, uh, what do you call that? They get the skirt, not the skirt, but they get intimidated. This is a long qu question. Get intimidated with women. I was going to get to that. I was going to get to that. I was going to get to that. And then make them stop their work or it, be, it starts a fight because women are more. No, 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 no. See, this is where the women, women empowerment comes involved. She, and, and I'm going to break it down because she said the whole paragraph. When, when you meet a powerful woman, men get intimidated and try to break them down. The key word was try. If you're a powerful woman and you believe in yourself, no one can ever break you down, first of all. If you're a powerful person, no one can break you down. Because I hate when they was like, girl, you were doing good. You had this, you had that until you messed with him. Whoa. Because that means you were. But I'm just saying, if you're a powerful person, you stay powerful. No one can bring you down. Exactly. That means you wasn't powerful enough. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. But for a person to meet this one person and they do get intimidated. Like if you see, like a, for, for me, uh, many people told me, you know this girl liked you? And I was like, she did? So why she never said nothing? Oh, because she thought you were out of her league. Well, you do not know until you try. You understand? All because a person dresses business-wise, maybe they still... Because there's a ghetto in everybody, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but a lot of people feel that way. Um, but, because there are times where I, be, I look at guys and be like, know your limit. Know your limit. And it's because 
you can't be trying to holler at people on the 15th floor if you only live on the second. They're never going to hear you. You know what I mean? I know I'm trying to use stuff that you probably don't understand, but you can't, you got to be somewhat in the same level with that person for you. Now, I'm not talking about money wise, but you can be in the same level mentally and push yourselves because that's the reason why I say if you see a lot of people with guys with the white girls, oh, it's because uh, there was so many different rumors because the, the white girl always goes down on them. And, you know, they, they, they go through all their emotions and make them feel like they're kings and stuff like that. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But why is it that I've seen a lot of people go out with some other different woman and they rise up? Because that woman is the one that pushes that man to go up. Why do you think more and more guys are wearing their pants saggy? Because the women don't say nothing about it. You understand? If, if you're with me, if you tell the guys, <laughs> I ain't, woof, any guy that wears their clothes down like that ain't getting nothing, no time, no thing, believe it or not, the guys won't do it. And this is exactly the same way with the girls. Why you think, why we call hoochie mamas or wearing all these things, want to show this, show that, because the guys go after that, so they know that. But they're always attracting the wrong guy, and then they're always saying, oh, these guys are nothing. I'm always getting these uh, guys that are no good. Oh, now I got to raise this kid by myself. You and the other six mama, um, baby mamas have to raise him by yourself because you knew he had five other kids he wasn't raising. You knew from the fact that he was not a father figure. He did not want a child. So stop putting the blame on everything else and look in the mirror once and for all. The same thing with the guys. But right now, I'm just speaking about it because the woman empowerment is going a little too far. And by you taking this and pushing it towards another, uh, re redirecting it to another thing is not right. So that's all I have to say. Uh, my name is Charles Aloma again, and thank you for watching the LDM show. Uh, come back next week and watch us. But also, um, shout out to our network who has the new vid zone came out with the LDM radio station. So you want to watch some good music videos, check out the LDM radio station. So, but again, uh, thank you for everyone that was watching. Continue with the comments below. Uh, I'm going to be watching some of the comments later on as well and responding to them. But it is a good conversation. So I'll see you next week. Remember, stay warm, be safe, and get a good He's perspective. He's